Ember Knights is a roguelike made by Doom Turtle. I'm scared now. I don't want to be blown up by a Doom Turtle. And published in 2023. I first saw it on Nintendo's YouTube channel and thought it looked like a fun game to play with my sisters. I also had little flame guys. I, I like little guys. So I played it and it was great. I really liked it. Then I watched some videos about other roguelikes, played a lot of Isaac, and had some conversation with others. Then I realized it's not a very good roguelike. Well, but I, uh, I, I still think it's a really fun. Yeah, despite it being subjectively and objectively not great roguelike, it's my favorite. Why? Be, be patient. I'm gonna tell you. Because of structure or something, I should tell you the story. Praxis, this guy, is evil and you have to stop him. Yeah, it's basically just that, but it works for a game like this. It's not like Isaac where you have a whole true story that you've got to piece together through multiple endings to realize that, uh, spoilers. The game was actually Isaac's imagination going wild as he was suffocating in a chest due to potentially boost his mother and a heavy push on religion making him think he was a demon child so he tries to kill himself. Yeah, no, this is just funny man hates everyone. Go murder him. Have a start. You have one class and end up unlocking it more as you go and you do each run. Each class has a stand attack and a hold attack which if released correctly can be a, a perfect attack which makes it do more damage and sometimes a gimmick to go alongside them. For a gimmick example, the second class you get, the bow. Powers up the more consecutive perfect charge shots you do in a row. Also, a mechanic that I'll discuss later lets me do this. Yeah. Like most roguelikes, once you unlock all the classes, you'll end up just finding one that you like the most and just use that and barely touch the others due to how different the playstyles can be between classes. The class I picked, I find extremely fun to play with. I like the moveset a lot. It's essentially a slightly above average range of melee weapon and the charge is a ranged, which is what I like having both options. I believe all the weapons have good variety and difference in playstyle, but you'll probably at least find one you quite enjoy. During the first area of the game, you get two different skills which you get by selecting one skill out of two provided. I really like this a lot because it means you can get unique movesets on each run and you can experiment to find a combo you like. Personally I like Wisps because they're a little guy. And Arlen for shopkeeper's dice which is gambling baby! Woo I may have an addiction to luck. I can control it. I need to play Mario Party. Give me Mario Party! Once you roll the dice you get a random effect out of six I think you can choose from since it's a d6. And it can damage enemies as it rolls. I like for the rolling attack alone, but the random effects make it so much better and adds luck! I think I need therapy. Each skill charges up as you hit enemies, and depending on what skill you pick, you can have up to three full charges at once without relics. The only problem with this is that there aren't a lot of skills compared to the amount of runs you do. There is like 22 or something, which is impressive, but once you get the last little tree upgrade, where you can refresh it up to four times, I think, you can nearly guarantee to get at least one of your preferred moveset. I believe it's still unique enough for a mechanic and there's still enough variation for it to be unique in its execution, to my knowledge. And I personally really like it. The biggest problem that affects roguelike design is enemy variation. Each world has like five main enemies and three of these have stronger forms per world which adds an extra attack for a grand total of eight enemies per world with an asterisk. This is generally not the amount of variety present in these games, I believe. The rooms are all fairly similar as well, even across worlds. None have unique mechanics, and most that do are entirely avoidable in most cases. Take Speedy Castle. Its two gimmicks are that it has these little ice freezes which get angry and attack you after you initially hit it, which is very easy to avoid because I keep forgetting they exist and you generally move around a lot. You also have these horns which give you temporary damage to us, and that's about it. These are both entirely avoidable, and I often accidentally do skip them or barely notice it. Now, of course, you don't need a gimmick, but due to the low enemy variety, it, it would help variation. I personally don't mind how low the enemy variety is, though, mainly because you will need to know their attack bands, and each enemy is a lot more memorable in this game compared to some other roguelikes. In Hades, for example, there are a lot of early enemies, which I barely know what they do because they die so quick, partially because they use a Chaos Shield, which has a stun. A lot of the later ones that I do have attack cycles are kind of in the back of my subconscious. Here, if you ask me the enemies in this world and what they do, we'll take the first word, SOGGY FISH! I can go, oh, you have a chompy spawner which spawns chompies which do a basic lunge attack at you, but they take a while to do so. And then you have the worm which pop up and shoot projectiles at you and they're like a stronger variant that can shoot three in a row and these little tree guys that throw bombs and do lingering AOE and then the strongest guys are like chompies but faster and bulkier and hit harder. Hades. Uh have the big guy that swings a club. You have skeleton heads which kind of don't do much I think. 
Wait, were they in Tartarus or were they in Acidale? Uh, shoot, uh... You have the bomb guys and... Th no, wait, they're in Acidale. Yeah, I don't have much of an idea here. As you can see, first zone in that game is so forgettable to me besides the boss. If I play it again, I can probably remember more, but currently I can't remember any. I personally see the fact I can remember each enemy as a plus. There are some similar enemies between worlds, excluding the last one, but in that final case, I believe that is the point. The similar enemies may be a bit of a negative, but personally, I don't think it's too bad. It's like in Soggy Fish, there's a guy chuckering a small lingering AoE attack, then in Speedy Gast, you have a guy summoning a vortex below you, which is much larger and they can move around for a period of time. I'm not sure if they stop after they initially deploy it and have a cooldown, or if it's permanent. I believe that's different enough and the Raisin difficulty to be okay in my eyes. At least I know what both of them do. My main problem with this game is the relics is kind of not very well balanced. Relics are your run upgrades and they can be better balanced. This is because the poison ring and most of your lightning abilities are the same rarity but the poison is a lot better in general. For some lightning it's something like whenever you create a lightning bolt attacks an enemy which isn't like a mass chain reaction between enemies like Hades. It's like one attack which very quickly loses steam as you progress through the world. Poison is always somewhat good but lightning kind of never is. This is especially a problem when I think these basics are genuinely better than some of the rarer options you get. You can get like this thing or you can just whenever you get a perfect skill get armor which is essentially a temporary health, max health boost until you lose it. Or instead how about every time you avoid attack you get armor. What about you get the point. Poison and armor and even burn to some extent vastly outclass most of the relics in this game. The main runs I do terribly are the runs where I don't get much of either. I kind of think that a lot of these relics need to be reworked or others be in higher tiers. The only problem with this is that the entire game likely might need a difficulty ho overhaul so then it's not completely unfair because this game is decently difficult. Currently I've won like three runs out of 70. One of the wins was on a previous version, and one of them was on the current version, which I believe is overall easier than the launch patch. Don't ask where that third one is, I can't remember. How? I don't know, more tree options and challenging things? Anvil especially. Yeah, no, that's not a joke, that's just literally what it's called. That area feels the most nerfed. Previously, unfortunately I don't have anything to show, so I'll just draw on the projection. Previously you had these little pylons which conjoined and whenever an enemy ran over it, it became supercharged, making its attacks a lot harder. These appeared in over half the rooms in Anvil. Now they have these stationary channels which shoot out a single zap of electricity to one enemy and are only like 25% of the rooms. But that 25% feels high. I personally dislike this change because it makes the main mechanic of the world less prevalent and making it less unique and removes some variation. I also think they just nerf some of the enemies, which thank god in some aspects because it makes this little munchkin a lot less annoying. Supercharge. They also added more random praxis doing stuff that makes the game a bit harder. In one case, more annoying and unfair. But it's an attempt to make the difficulty return. My sister and I might have gone a lot better compared to six months ago, but I don't know. Back to the relics after that little detour, I think it's just too easy to not experiment and check out a lot of the items, especially after you have a full nexus tree. It's incredibly easy to get an item which seems good, and possibly is good due to the fact you can have 4 slots and 4 rerolls which I rarely use all of. I feel like I haven't used at least like 30% of the relics in the game when there's over a hundred I believe. To the special rooms, cause screw structure, you have shop. Take a guess what that might be like. You have the Mimic King, which is an actually difficult, not purely luck-based little ball cup game, where if you win, you can get a lot of stuff, but if you lose, you have to fight a chest, which is just a time waster, but it's it's a fair enough punishment. I quite like it, because it's actually not easy as Sim. The main thing I don't like is how he's always asleep after the few, in air quotes, tutorial stages. It mainly means you can skip it, but it kind of annoys me that the little music doesn't play during the event. Sad. You also have the health fountain. Have a guess. And finally, you have the offering pit where you can ditch some items for possibly better or worse ones depending on your luck. You unlock it after doing the swipe side quest, which requires reaching Anvil to finish. By the way, his name is Bob. I don't know, I just think he's awesome. A lot of new mechanics and rooms get introduced as you progress through the game, which is cool. I'm not going to mention all the mechanics, even though I think this is the last one I haven't mentioned yet. Ash! After you save Epic Robo Guy, you get special rooms with two praxified enemies. I don't know how to explain it. If you have vision, here you go. If you don't, sorry. 
I generally feel bad now. Uh. Then get Ash after you beat it, which can be used to unlock special modifications to your weapons, which I like. The only problem is that it's in unlocked during the fourth out of the fifth Nexus world. And the fact you get so much really quickly makes it an essentially valueless material because within like three or four runs you can possibly unlock for your weapon of choice. A very minor problem I have is how separated the worlds are because you straight up go through a portal to get to each. This is very minor to me because if it wasn't like this we wouldn't have gotten soggy fish! Woo! We love soggy fish! My favorite thing about this game is the multiplayer. Games are always better with friends or family members. Unless your friends are a poor sport, or have anger issues, or hate you. But most of the time, I believe they are more fun. The multiplayer might be what makes it this my favorite roguelike. Yes, it is my favorite. It's only local co-op, but I'm fine with that. I'm not sure how or what they do to make the multiplayer balance. I haven't played enough single player to really an analyze why this may be. But it's a pretty good multiplayer game if you have a roommate or family members to play with. Segway to bosses and mini bosses time. Yeah. They're fun and well designed. The only problem is that a lot of the bosses are similar because all the bosses are the same and the mini bosses are the same with slight variation. Again, I don't personally mind because I believe they're all well designed with well telegraphed text and they're very good. I like them. There are just a bunch of little random things I haven't been able to fit anywhere else. pre patch in the final gauntlet used to get nothing and then fight the boss after like 15 rooms or something. I'm just pulling a random number out of thin air. Now you have rewards after completing each sector or something, which I like a lot less. The most I wanted was like a small heal before Praxis, not like a fountain like these little food items. I still really like this section, but I just think it's a bit weaker than before. There's also a massive difficulty jump between worlds, mainly in tanking this, but it's a lot less noticeable on successive attempts, maybe just because you get used to it, but definitely on the first attempts I noticed it a lot. All of the worlds are really fun, with the weakest one probably being Anvil, which is still better than a lot of other areas and other roguelikes. Even though with the lack of variation and runs can feel kind of same year over time, Empanoids is still my favorite roguelike. I like its ideas. It's combat is satisfying. The dodge roll is just a peak in the game mechanic, and if you disagree, I will take you to court. There's also a bunch of stuff I haven't touched on there, like looping and the... I don't know what they're technically called, so I'm just gonna call them the Pact of Punishment. Yes, it has both ways where it likes actually keep people who are really good coming back, which I think is awesome. Would I recommend it? Yeah. I really do like this game, even though I pointed out a lot of its faults, which don't actually detract from my personal enjoyment of the game, because I just like it. I don't know, <laughs> it's just fun, especially with friends, so I'd recommend getting it. Why haven't you purchased the game yet?